the Nuggets Suns series. Um, what are you thinking about coming out two games? 2 0. I think I had, as someone who had Nuggets in six, I believe I picked, I'm even shocked that they won the first two that the way they did. And game two was close for, right? It was, I mean, it was close through and through, really, but it felt like a little bit non competitive towards towards the end. What are, what are your just biggest thoughts? A bit, I have to say, biggest overarching thoughts coming out of this series so far? Uh, I think, well, so I guess it's sort of a reinforcement of what we talked about when we were previewing the series, which is to say that it was easier for us to imagine the Nuggets giving the Suns offense problems than the alternative. Um, and that's kind of been borne out. I, I just think after game, like for the Nuggets to win a game by double digits where Jamal Murray was three for 15. Like that's got to give, that's got to concern you as the Suns. Um, it's because like it, it was clear that the game plan was to make Jokic score a lot in game two, which is a little different than game one. And he obliged uh, he had 39 uh, on 17 of 30, just was much more willing to go to work in the post and, and even the mid post against DeAndre Ayton. Um, but yeah, I, I think, so this is the rare series where not a lot of what I thought going in has changed, um, which is so the Suns just don't have enough depth. Like their whole bench was a negative, uh, you know, Chris Paul broke down. That was a concern going in. Like, can, can this thin star heavy roster that has injury histories with Durant and Paul hold up so far? No, um, you two is not more than three. Like that was another angle coming in. That's really been the story certainly after game one. So, um, I'm not surprised uh, that the results are what they are or that they were arrived at by the process that they were arrived at. So um, it's just kind of gone the way that if you were forecasting a Nuggets win, this is sort of what it would look like, right? Like, I don't, is there anything that surprised you, I guess, would be the way to flip it? I, he, I don't know if he was tired. That Kevin Durant game was just, I never would have predicted two of 12 on threes. And look, to the Suns' credit, they, jacked 30 plus threes in game right. two and it's i think look, kevin durant six. took kevin durant took 12 of them and didn't devin booker take like he took eight of them so you had the mm -hmm. right guys hoisting up those threes it was josh akogi only only attempted two i mean he missed them all i mean first of all kevin durant and devin booker were the only players on the team to make threes did you point yeah. that out already i apologize no no, no so, but they made six total so you count yeah. when you said two of 12 and four of eight that was it yeah and so i i think if you're the Suns, you lean on the fact that Okay, Kevin Durant's not going to play like this again. Yeah. But that's like kind of the – like their shot profile does start to wear if they're not going to hit a bunch more threes because they're dead last um, in both the share – of this is includes playing teams. But for the playoffs, they're dead last in both rim frequency and three-point attempt rate. And I get it, the talent they have between CP3, if he's going up against drop, or just Kevin Durant and Devin Booker being able to take whatever they want in the mid-range – and they did show Devin Booker and Kevin Durant again, to their credit, they varied up their shot profile enough to take more threes in, in game two. Um, they're they're going to need to continue to do that. But the, the Chris Paul injury looms large here because then all of a sudden, if he's, it's good that they don't play again till Friday for the Suns. We don't know how severe the groin strain is right now, but it was severe enough for him not to come back in a game that was very winnable for Phoenix, right. which is concerning. And if you're not going to have him, you become incredibly reliant on campaign who's just going to be a wild card. And it doesn't seem like I don't know if this is a trust thing with Monty Williams and campaign did play 17 minutes in game two, but he was one of seven from the floor or four from three. He didn't play all that much in game one, which everyone was clapping. Is it because campaign is still dealing with the ill effects from his injury. And so that puts more of a burden on KD and Devin Booker. And I think you can latch onto the fact that Kevin Durant will shoot better, but uh, the matchups are starting to make me even more uncomfortable for Phoenix than I initially thought. I would have to look at the data on this and maybe I was spacing out too much. Like it's a problem when you just don't feel the need to throw help Aaron Gordon's way on Kevin Durant. Like Gordon, that's a, that that's a big issue. And Durant Gordon was probably, great in game two. He was great. He had several strips, like just was a force. In, like he was really, he was totally okay. great. That's a problem. I, I have a mini rant here. I posted a video of, it was Bruce Brown um, blocked Kevin Durant's jump shot. Like straight up blocked his jump shot. Aaron Gordon was there too. And people were in my mention saying, well, if the playoffs are running, into, I said, this is really hard to do. It's a Kevin Durant jump shot. They're like, well, not this postseason. The blocks that Russell Westbrook and most of the other Clippers had on Kevin Durant, they were either like strips, he's on his way up, or they came from behind. 
blocking a Kevin Durant jump shot at the apex of of the actual four. It's hard. I don't care if he doesn't have the same lift. It's hard. Such a like, controversial thing to well, say. It's hard. We don't have to well actually everything, especially when it's not this incendiary take. <laughs> um, but yeah. So Aaron Gordon's spectacular, and I, I mentioned this on Twitter. He always looks like he's dribbling a medicine ball in transition, and it just works out. So he's been massive. You mentioned the fact that Murray doesn't have a good game. Still hits like two big shots, by the mm -hmm. way, down mm -hmm. the stretch. I liked what Michael Malone said in his, I don't know if you saw the fourth quarter interview, where he's just like, he's thinking too much. and He's just like empowering Murray. And like, does he think Murray's going to go back and watch this later? I'm sure he told him the same thing in the huddle. I respected it, but there were points where I was just like, no, like Murray's got to he was killing him, like some of the turnovers that he had yeah. too. But like they were able to pull these different levers where it's like, okay, we, at this point, we know we're going to play through Jokic who doesn't have his most efficient game. And I would argue this is the least lethal version of the Nuggets where you need him to score that many points and be that aggressive mm -hmm. um, because, yeah, okay, I get it. You want to milk the one-on-one -on -one coverage with Aiton and other bigs. But it's also because Jamal Murray wasn't giving you anything and Porter was off. And then even just most of the supporting cast until KCP got hot was off. Um, the fact that they're able to win this game is huge, but also look at one of the things they did was, okay, well, we're going to go like the Bruce Brown route instead of Michael Porter Jr. Um, because we need Bruce Brown gives you more creativity on the ball probably, but just we're going to pull that defensive lever more and put more pressure on the Suns that way. And so I, I, def I think people kind of, and I saw people talking about it on Twitter during game two, but like we all probably, this is someone who picked them to win the title might've just underestimated like how versatile their um, defensive personnel is or the lineups that they can run. And I've even mentioned it on this, this pod. Like I've said the, the nuggets, when you look at their top six or seven guys, they have a bunch of different versatile cords to, to like lean on or pull whatever strum cords to strum. How do you like that? Little guitar, whatever. Uh, so I even underestimated that. And part, you know, you know what part of the underestimation is? Christian Brown's a motherfucker. He's tough. He's real He's tough. Like, like he had a bunch of good plays, took some charges last night. I mean, that's he he absolutely uh it, it, like he's a rookie. But defensively, that's a guy you can throw out there and trust just full stop. Like I, whatever he gives you offensively is whatever. But like that's value just compared to like when, when Monty Williams goes looking down the bench for like, ah, I just need someone to get out here and guard, or I need someone to, there's just nobody there that like the, the, you know, there's no, there's no guys. I mean, I don't know what's happened to TJ Warren. I don't know if, I honestly don't know if he's hurt or, or not, or like what the situation is. Um, but the, the Suns just don't have someone that they can throw out there and say, well, this, you know, they, they went, they, Damian Lee, I think played 26 minutes last night. And so, he kind of he kind of has to, especially if you're, they didn't put Shamit or Ross either in addition to Warren. They're, they're just they don't have they don't. I think honestly, uh, it's easy to feel this way now because the Suns are in a hole. But like, I think one of the things we overlooked or didn't focus on enough because the playoffs this doesn't tend to matter as much was just they just don't have enough guys. They just don't have you know forget. And that was arguably you know, the case to begin with, by the way. Right. Right. It's not like they gave up this bounty of bodies. Jay Crowder wasn't playing for them right. at the time. So yeah. and I'm not playing for the Bucks either, but <laughs> yeah, not playing for anybody. <laughs> um, also, it's a good thing that the Suns don't that game three is not till Friday because you had 44 more minutes for Durant and 45 you, for Booker. You do that on purpose, though, because you know it's not till Friday, at least. That's not something that was incidental. I get I'm incidental, just right. saying, like, I, if I'm gonna bring it up for the Lakers, like the stars wearing down. You know, that was an issue going into this series because they were playing tons of minutes uh, in the first round, too. So, yeah, yeah, that's that's Here's, helpful. You got to get game three if you're the Suns. You got to oh, get. It. Oh, you, you think? So yeah, you, I do. If you're the Suns, you wouldn't want to go behind 3-0? So, historically, Dan, you want to avoid the 3-0. <laughs> that's just, you know, I know people get tired of stats and they don't want to hear it. Just watch the games, nerd. Just, you just really want to avoid the 3-0 hole if you can. I don't want to get too big picture here, but when I said this about the Cavs and some of it holds true to Phoenix is that sometimes, and I would argue even more so when you make a trade like this mid season, it takes some time to balance out the roster. The reason it feels so much more dire for Phoenix is because you're dealing with players in Chris Paul, who's now injured. We don't know what's going to happen with that growing strain and Kevin Durant age 34 with a pretty checkered injury pass at this point who don't have the, the window that a Donovan Mitchell, Evan Mobley, Darius Garland, Jared Allen do. And that's why there's more urgency for this core. But if we're being, if we're being honest or if we're being reasonable, 
and I know the Suns were favored to win this series, right? Or was everyone just picking them to win this series? I don't even know if I caught the series prices. I can't remember. But if, if we're being reasonable, it's not so much that continuity matters. Like you should just like, we shouldn't have expected them to win this series because Kevin Durant and Devin Booker exist. That's why we expect them to win this series. So yeah. I don't want to get too big picture on that, but like we have to be a little bit fair in the sense of, well, they kind of deserve, I know they're not young, but after a shakeup like this, you might need an off season. I get inherently you can't view it like that, but this maybe shouldn't shock us. Um, the other thing I will say, and he started off the game and he had some really thunderous dunks in Deandre Ayton. Amazing. Um, he dunked. Right. And there's no one who's going to, there's no one who's going to just win the Nikola Jokic battle. It's not, it's not happening. And this is not, again, I had less of an issue with DeAndre Ayton's game two performance than I did his game one performance. I don't even have an issue with, you'd like him to be more aggressive on offense still, but like the Suns aren't necessarily running. Uh, and Django says in the chat, holding the Suns under 90 was big. Yeah. I mean, this was not, I never would have picked this to be the series in which the winning team had fewer than a hundred points, by the way, I never would have. <laughs> Never would have forecasted that. But when you start to look at the roster construction, you can't, DeAndre Ayton can't be this player and also be making max money on the Suns. I'm not saying he doesn't, he, the mark, his market was his market. Good for him for getting paid. Unless something, I would argue, even if they, unless they just dominate from here on out, don't lose and win the title, you can't have DeAndre Ayton on this team at his pay grade because you need to allocate those funds elsewhere to where, look, you're going to, I'm not saying Landale or Biombo is the answer. Biombo got cooked when he first came on the floor. Yeah. Like you're just going to be able to approximate big man value, a play finishing big man on offense um, easier than you can wing defense or looking for secondary floor generals or ball handlers or shooters at this point. And I don't want to go there just yet. I'm open to considering it won't be this way, but because we have like two years is worth of evidence at this point of, of how topsy turvy DeAndre Ayton is, you can't, have him on this roster making what he does after, especially after that Durant trade, where you don't have other trade chips to play. Yeah. He needs to turn into like three guys, you know, at least one starter, but three guys that the Suns can feel good about having out there uh, in a series like this. That that's totally right. I mean, what is he, you know, at full strength, he's the fourth option, right? I mean, I mean, Chris Paul, I don't know how, what kind of option you consider him, but he's certainly going to have the ball more than he is. So you're, you're a fourth option on offense who, you know, sometimes looks good defensively, sometimes not, um, sometimes gets, you know, really exposed on the board. Sometimes it's just, yeah, you're right. He's got to be, you have to flip him into, you don't even need like a, a star at another position. It's just got to be like, you know, higher, you know, high end rotation slash starter guys that can complement uh, what the Suns have on the star front, basically. Is you had Suns in seven. Has your prediction changed at all? Did I? I thought I picked Nuggets in seven. Oh, did you pick Nuggets in seven? I, all right. I Are you Nuggets in four? Remember. What's that? Are you Nuggets in four now? Is that? <laughs> Ooh, yeah. So that maybe we should reevaluate. How many? I mean, obviously, you know, we have two warring cliches here. One is the series doesn't start till the till the home uh, home team loses. So this series hasn't technically started by that <laughs> logic. Um, but two zero is two zero. So if you're reevaluating it now how many games do the Suns win in this series? Assuming the Nuggets are going to win it. Do they get I think two? I'll, I think I'll stick with my prediction because the Suns have just missed. And you know, who's been a big part of this, Kevin Durant, they missed so many like relatively open jumpers in this yeah. series yeah. so far. They are. Yeah. They have an effective field goal percentage of under 47 on open and wide open jumpers combined. So that's yeah. when defenders are four or more feet away from you. And the fact that Kevin Durant has been a part of that just leads me to believe that. Okay. There's going to be, I would expect them to win game three, to be honest. And mm -hmm. I guess you could say, well, you can't, I, look, I think Torrey Craig and like some of the stuff they've thrown at Josh, like using Josh Kogi that they've thrown at Jamal Murray. He had tough shots in game one. He missed tough shots in game two. And then also made some really bad decisions. I'm not saying he's going to be that bad every single game, but like Phoenix showed that they could really, and that was without like throwing all these bodies at Jokic necessarily that Nuggets offense was ugly. So it's like, they've shown they can ugly that up. And I think that their offense is inherently rickety just because it doesn't feel like there's a lot of creativity there. And I, I would expect we saw Monty Williams try this. Uh, I think the first half of game one and then the first half of game two, like it's, you gotta be done. I know he's not winning the Jokic minutes, but you can't do the Deandre Ayton against the Nuggets bench lineup. There's just not enough there offensively to me that Ayton's providing you. If that changes, maybe you're even more inclined to go that route without Chris Paul. If he's not available, I'd probably ditch those though. So I would expect them to almost win game three. My prediction hasn't changed on this. I think we have 
a tendency to just sort of we're, we're so reactionary. It's like they didn't get the doors. They played uh, their offensive process was not great in game right. and they missed some high quality shots. It was not great in game two. And it wasn't great in game one either. And they, they were in a position to like where they could have won. They had an eight point lead, right? When Chris Paul went down. And so I don't think the, it got away from them a little bit in the end, they lose by 10, but I would expect them to win game three. I don't expect them to win this series. Like I said, because it just feels like they don't have, you mentioned it during the preview more than I did. They don't have enough bodies, which it at once feels like an oversimplification, but it's also just the God's honest truth. Yeah. And look, the uh, Chris Paul was a plus eight in a game. His team lost by 10. So like, I mean, <laughs> I, I sometimes I get annoyed by the way that Paul plays and, and just the shots that he seems to want to take. But like, I, I, I just don't know where you go <laughs> for easy shots. If you're the Suns, uh, if one of your best generators of the shots you want to take, even if they're bad math is not out there and not able to, to get you into your offense. So yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure what? I picked Nuggets in seven. I can't even remember now, but like I might come down from that. I might say a fewer games now. And you know what? I might need to, if, like, if Chris Paul's not going to play again, or let's not get too ahead of yeah. My prediction yeah. hasn't changed if we think CP3 plays yeah. again.